students a warm welcome to our online classes i am k r ravi kumar lecturer in computer science gopala swami pu college mysore students in this online class session i am going to introduce you or i am going to uh, brief you about the first year puc computer science syllabus this is written on, already on the board the entire here in the syllabus totally there are 17 chapters all these chapters are divided into four units unit a unit a from chapter 1 up to chapter 4 and chapter 5 is only in unit b and and the unit c we have from chapter number 6 up to chapter number 14 then unit d under this we have three more chapter so all together are 17 chapters divided into four different units now let me brief you chapter wise one by one here unit a chapter 1 overview of computer in this chapter you are going to learn from the basic definition of computer from what is a computer and what is the history of computers and what are how the fun computer functions or how it works with the help of a block diagram of a computer along with that evolution of computer nothing but history of computers and how the computer is evolved from from days back to present day computer that comes under history of computer then apart from that generation of computer based on that uh, the development in the field of te- information and technology or in the f- in the development in the field of science so these computers are classified based on the technology involved in the computer system that is generation of computers and again we are cl- classification of computers cl- computers can be classified into different types like a mainframe computers mini computers micro computers and at last you are going to learn in the chapter what are the applications of computers so this is chapter 1 and in chapter 2 in that is input output and memory devices here you are going to learn some hardware parts of computers or you are you will be knowing few hardware parts will be involved in computer system that is input output and memory devices and what is input unit and what is input generally we say your computer system or cpu will be connected with different hardware there are some of them are called input devices and few of them are output devices so for example keyboard is input device your mouse is input device so we are going to learn how exactly it works or few definition of some technical terms in the chapter input output devices about input devices like keyboard mouse and uh, apart from this you are going to learn ocr omr normally what we using in banks MICR, all these things, and and the output devices. You are going to learn about what are printers. Printer is an output device. Then about speaker, and under printer we have different types of printers. If you observe that from the beginning we have started with dot matrix printer. Now we are using laser printer or, or inkjet printers. So you are going to learn types of printer systems or printers and its definitions and its applications and next one is memory devices so what is a memory device and all of you know what is the use of memory why do we use a memory in computer system that is to store data and information and again here we have different types of memory that is called primary memory or secondary memory or cache memory so you are going to learn in detail uh, what are the types of primary memory Uh, types of secondary memory like hard disk and cd rom everything and the primary memory you are going to learn ram and rom and again cache memory so that is those are the topics will be covered in chapter 2 next if you come to chapter 3 this is called data representation data representation here is little bit of mathematics for you and here and all of you know what is data so what is data representation and what is a data if you talk about student data student name is a data student 
roll number is a data, his section, his marks obtained, his average, everything is a, 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 a different type of data. So here you are going to represent, how would we represent these data in computer system? That's what you are going to learn here. And also we have, we will come across number systems. In mathem number system, what is a number system? We have different types of number system, like binary number system, where we are using only zeros and one, octal number system, hexadecimal number system, and decimal number system. Normally in our day-to-day -day life, we are using decimal number system, where, what is the meaning of decimal number system? Deci means 10. So we are using only 10 digits from 0 to 9 to represent different types of values. So similarly, you are going to learn different types of number system. And uh, not only that, and also you are going to learn how to conversion, number conversion from one decimal, from one number system to another decimal, another number system. Apart from that, we are going to, how do we represent numbers like a positive numbers or negative numbers through in the form of ones complement or twos complement form. And also you are going to learn binary arithmetic means how, what is the binary in the sense? the numbers will consist of only zeros and one. How do we add those things? We are, we are, I mean, we are going to explain about binary addition, binary subtraction and all. And apart from this, and also uh, uh, this chapter ends with some computer codes and we are representing different types of data in the form of computer codes. Generally they are, uh, you might have heard about ASCII code, ASCII, B, C, D, F, C, D. So we are going to learn a brief uh, definition of all these computer coding system or types of codes. That is under chapter 3. Now when you move on to chapter 4, here this software concept. So when you, you know what is a software? Software is nothing but a computer program. So in this under software concept, you are going to learn what is a software, types of software and what are programs. And apart from that, you know, operating system, all of you are familiar with Windows, Windows is operating system. Similarly, you are going to learn what are operating system, what are the applications, what are different types of operating system and everything. And also what are the main functions of operating system. And that chapter ends with by comparing function or functionality or features of different operating systems available just like DOS operating system, Windows, Unix and Linux. So you will be learning the difference between different types of operating system. Next when we come to will we move on to next chapter 5. From under unit A you will be learning the basic of computer generally we say from here to here and from chapter 5, on, five onwards you will be learning uh, the chapters or uh, concept based on programs, computer programs. And here, so here in second, in first PUC, you are going to learn a computer language called C++. So based on those programming concepts, the chapter number five, that is problem solving methodology. So what is problem solving methodology? Suppose I want to write a program for student database. Suppose if that is a program, that is not, that is we are comparing that with a how to solve, how to start writing a program, how to start developing a program. So those concepts comes under the problem solving methodology because all programs, everything has to be pre-planned. If you don't plan, then it may end up somewhere else. So. Suppose if you want to write a soft program or if you want to develop a new software with respect to programming concept, it has to be planned, pre-planned. So those in the chapter you are going to learn uh, what the different types of problem solving or how to define the problem, how to analyze the problem and type of what type of data we have to input and what type of or what are the outputs or we are going to expect. So all designing part, every come, everything comes under this chapter, problem solving methodology. Apart from that, it is going to introduce few programming const, uh, programming construct, 
what we say programming construct means programming statements we are we have something called sequence statements or selection statements as iteration statements these are different types of statement that you are going to learn in detail when you are, when you when we, we introduce you the language c++ and and also it um, it also talks in this chapter you, you are going to learn about what is the quality of a good software suppose any software is available in the market and how do we rate them how do we suppose whether it is a good software or bad software what is the quality of the software those things so definition you are going to learn in the chapter problem solving methodology and also uh, at this chapter ends with how to approach a problem or suppose if i how to approach a problem solving methodology that's the first step suppose i if i want to write a program or if i'm develop a software how to start with what is the how to approach the problem that's what under that you are going to learn we have different types of approach to a problem like top down design and bottom up design modular design and structured programming see these you are going to learn see few definitions related to programming concept under the chapter problem solving methodology next we, we, if we move on to unit c that is from here onwards this entire unit c from chapter number 6 up to chapter number 14 which are there you are going to learn a computer language language c++ in puc in first puc we are going to teach you a computer language c++ <coughs> from the beginning chapter number 6 will start with object oriented concepts see before we start with introduction to c++ here you will be knowing different types of programming different types of programming see this is one computer object oriented concept this is one of the concept or one of the method of programming that's what you are going to learn in first and second puc in detail but <coughs> before that you will be knowing one more method is called procedure oriented programming that is another method so in this chapter you are going to learn difference between procedure oriented language object oriented language and what are the features of object oriented language or generally we say oops concept that's what you are going to learn different features like what is a class what is an object what is data encapsulation data abstraction data polymorphism data inheritance everything and data messaging all those things and apart from that also you are going to learn what are the applications of oops concept or object oriented concept what are the uh, drawback of this and what are the uh, applications of and advantages of this oops concept these things you are going to learn in the chapter six object oriented concept then in chapter number 7 from here onwards it is you are going to learn a language c++ from chapter number 7 up to chapter number 14 we are going to learn different concepts under chapter 7 introduction to c++ we are going to start with uh, the history of c++, uh, c++ language how the c++ language has been evolved or it has been introduced in with respect to programming concept from the history apart from that you are going to learn about what are tokens and keyword these are the terms we are using in our programming concept or with the even c++ programs so then apart from that what are punctuators punctuate nothing but your comma full stop semicolon called punctuators apart operator suppose if we talk about operators if a a plus is an operator is called arithmetic operator suppose if i say 2 plus 3 you are going to get the answer 5 so here plus is an operator so we are going to learn about different types of operator and they are called arithmetic operator similarly if i want to use a less than b less than is an operator it comes under relational operator similarly we have unary operators logical operators and uh, ternary operators so we are going to learn the basic of definition of what are operators and types of operators and also what is an assignment operator suppose if i say a equals to 10 the 
meaning is 10 is the value assigned to a variable a with respect to programming concept. So here equal to is an assignment operator. So those things you are going to learn in this chapter, uh, I mean introduction to C++. Also type conversion, how do we convert from one form of data to another form. For example, I have a number. 10, I want to convert it into decimal number or if I have a number 7.5, I have to convert it into an integer part or like a whole number like 7. So those concepts also we are going to learn this chapter and this chapter ends with structure of C++ program or skeleton of C++ program. I mean how a C++ program should be or how it looks like and what are all the uh, concept of what are all the what are different parts of C++ program. So these are the things we are going to explain you in the chapter chapter number 7 and chapter number 8 again all these from chapter number 7 to 14 are nothing but different concepts in C++ language. So day, chapter number 8 here data types you know what is a data if i talk about data of a student roll number is a, a roll number is a type of data his name is a type of data maybe his register number is also another form of data and maybe it's a grade of a students its percentage and result so here so we have different forms of data so how do we store or what are the different how can we store different forms of data in c++ so those concepts we are going to learn in the chapter 8 here we are we have different types of data the i mean we have something called fundamental data types or predefined or derived data types as well as user defined data types next if you move on to chapter number 9 here we are going to learn input output operators under introduction, we, are, we have already told you about operators. That is nothing but assignment operator, arithmetic operator, relational operator, logical operator. Similarly, this is the rest programming. I am going to, we are, we are going to explain input, output operator. You know what is the input? Input is what? Input, the meaning of input is accepting value from the user or from the computer for processing. Once the values are accepted from the user, through input devices, it has to be processed and result has to be displayed on the output devices just like a monitor. So to do so, so suppose how do we accept the value from the keyboard, how do we print out, print it or how do we display on the monitor on the output devices that we are going to learn with the help of an operator, input operator and output operator. Next if you move on to next chapter number 10. <coughs> Chapter number 10, it is control statements. Control statements is a chapter where you are learning different types of statements, control statements. I mean, normally, how do we, normally in a programming concepts, the programming statement is executes line by line, generally. So, suppose if you want to change the sequence of operation of our statements, we may have to make use of control statement. We have different control statements like if, if else, if else if, switch statement. <coughs> Apart from this, we have iteration statements or repetition statement like for loop, we say loop, loops, for loop, while loop and do while loop. These are all different concept or control statements. Apart from that, we are also uh, tell you about what are gem statements. And again, how do we move from one part of program to another part, or another part of a program, or maybe out of a program? Those things we, we can learn with the help of jump statements like go to statement, break statement, or continue statement. So, in this chapter 10, control statements, we are uh, we will we are learning, or we will teach you. <coughs> different control statements along with the definition, syntax and with the programs, with the example programs. Next we, we move on to chapter number 11, it is arrays. You know what is, I mean, what are arrays? Arrays is one more concept in programming where the values more, more than one values are stored under one name. 
Suppose for example, if I say a equal to 10 in a programming concept, 10 is the value stored under a variable a. So, variable a can hold only one value. Similarly, if I want to store more values under one name, then we have to make use of a concept called arrays. Under arrays, you are going to learn what is the definition of an array, how do we declare an array, and what are types of array, like one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array, or multi-dimensional array. And we are going to learn the chapter with few example programs. Next, we move on to chapter number 12, that is functions. This concept function is a type of concept here. It is nothing but a group of statements and we are giving one name for it. So it, under functions, it is nothing but a group of statements and it does some specific work or task. Similarly, and under in programming concept, we have two types of function. One is inbuilt functions. Normally we say library function. That's what you are going to learn the chapter functions. Under function, you are going to learn about library function. What are library functions? Library functions are predefined function or inbuilt functions within the software. So we are learning how to use those software with the syntax, declaration and simple example along with the example program. And if we move on to chapter number 13, that is user defined functions. As I told you just now, we have there are two types of function. One is function that is built in functions. Second one is user defined function. Nothing but user is nothing but programmer. A programmer can develop or can write his own functions for his application. So based on this, we have user defined function. Under user defined function, we will teach you how to def what is the definition of user defined function, how to define a function, user defined function, how to write the syntax of that, and everything you are going to learn this. And also, once the function has been written, it has to be used or it has to be invoked or it has to be called. So those also we are learning along with how do we call the functions, whether your function is uh, consists of uh, arguments or parameters that is one part and apart from that yeah, we will also tell you about call by value and call by reference method that is nothing but invoking functions invoking user defined function in a program and also we will give you one a simple example a structure for how do we use array as a function argument because each and every functions may or may not have argument. What are arguments are nothing but also called as parameters. So suppose if you have an array, how do we use an array as a function parameter? That we will explain you with a simple uh, syntax or example. Next we move on to chapter number 14. The chapter number 14 is structure. Structure is nothing but is also a is an example structure is an example for derived data types that you are going to learn under chapter data types we have in this chart under chapter 8 you will be giving some examples so one of the example is structure and in this chapter there won't be any programming for you just here we will explain you or we will give you the definition syntax and how do you define a structure with simple example and here students from <coughs> chapter number 7 up to chapter number is 14 is a, a entire this chapter covers your <coughs> C++ programming concept or C++ language. Under this, all the chapters, all the all the chapters we are going to explain with different syntax and with with uh, example programs. Next, if we move on to unit D, that is the last part of it. And here there are three chapters. And these three chapters, chapter 15 is word processing. Word processing software. This is a word processing software. What is word processing software? It is a soft, is an application software or which is software which has been developed for uh, your text applications like writing a letter, drafting a letter, write application. And uh, we have to maintain one data 
right? Documentation, everything comes under this. And he, this is we are going to explain with an example of MS Word application software. And in MS Word, we will start with how to create a document, how to open a document, how to save your file, and I mean, and also you are going to learn different features of MS Word application, like in the form of tables, how do you arrange table, how to create tables tables, rows and columns and how do you, I mean different types of alignment, different how do we edit the software, cut, copy, paste and coloring, everything we are going to learn or we are going to, you are, we are going to explain different features of MS Word application. Next. And in chapter number 16, this is spreadsheet, here you are going to learn an MS Excel as an example for spreadsheet application software. Actually, spreadsheet software is a software which has been developed for the calculation or mathematical applications, calculation purpose. So here we will teach you what is MS Excel, how do you open a file, how do you create MS Excel worksheet. Apart from that, different features of MS Word applications. And and all of you know that it has many inbuilt functions and MS Excel is a very powerful language and it has many good features. So you are going to learn few of them in this chapter spreadsheet software. Next, when you move on to chapter number 17, it is web designing. Now students, as in today, all of you are familiar with what is internet and what is website and what is web page. So in this chapter web designing, we will teach you the basic definition of what is internet and what are the services of internet. I mean, what, with the help of internet, what are the things we can do through computers. Those we will explain you with an example. And apart from that, some technical definitions related to web designing, like what is a web page, uh, what is website, what is URL, domains, everything, few definitions you are going to learn in this chapter, web designing. And also you are going to learn one more computer language called HTML. What is HTML? That is Hypertext hyper Markup Language. This is the language, one of the language, how we have C++, similarly this is also one of the language. But application of C++ is different and here HTML application is different. So in the HTML is a language which is it has been used for developing website. So you are going to learn few basic of HTML commands or we say tags. You are going to learn basic some text tab, some other list, order list, unordered list and how do we format some text and how do you insert a picture, uh, I mean how do you have a background for this and along with the HTML structure, I mean you know what I mean structure is nothing but how a program looks like or how program would be. So these are things you are going to learn this chapter HTML. So students all together have given you brief introduction about all the syllabus of first PUC computer science, computer science subject and here there are some again I repeat once again there are four sections unit A, unit B, unit C and unit D overall 17 chapters and also here students observe this I have written here weightage of these chapters of respective each and every chapter here chapter 1 weightage is 8 marks here weightage is we have one mark question 1 and 3 marks question 1 and 2 marks question 1 and 5 marks question 1 so 8 weightage is 8 marks similarly I have written for all the chapter in this weightage is 6 marks 1 mark question 1 and 2 marks question 1 and 3 marks question 1 and no 5 marks question so similarly I have written for all the chapter weightage along with the weightage here data representation 8 marks software concept 5 marks and problems or methodology it is 11 marks and again this chapter object or in concept weightage is 2 marks here we have, we have only one question of 2 marks introduction C++ 9 marks data types 2 input output operator the weightage is 4 marks Similarly, for control statement, 11 marks, arrays, 9 marks, functions, 
2 marks and user defined function 6 marks here one 5 marks questions and one 1 mark question similarly if you look at the structure chapter weightage is 3 marks only one 3 marks question and under chapter 15 weightage is 3 marks we have one 1 mark questions one 2 marks question and for spreadsheet software one 1 mark question two five marks questions weightage is 11 marks and under web designing we have five marks and this only one question is a very long answer question and this i have given you introduction to this syllabus this covers only the theory part theory part of your subject computer science it for theory it has there are 70 marks so this covers your 70 marks and rest remaining 30 marks is for practicals overall it is 100 marks paper so students hope you have got an uh, idea about the syllabus first year PUC computer science syllabus and I hope you will understand better in our forthcoming online sessions thank you very much